I'm Harry and I want to thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It's free, it's easy, and that way I can keep bringing great content for everyone. Today's video is a very, very special video. On Saturday, Baylor and Houston will square off in the NCAA Tournament semifinals, with the winner earning a shot next Tuesday at becoming the men's basketball national champions, something that only one school in the whole state of Texas has been able to do so far. Texas Western, now known as UTEP. Today's video is a throwback interview with one of the players from that 1966 national championship team, Harry Flournoy, who during his senior season was a captain and starter in the first ever all black starting lineup in a men's basketball national championship game where despite only playing six minutes due to injury, he ended up on the cover of Sports Illustrated grabbing a rebound over Kentucky's Pat Riley. Unfortunately, Mr. Flournoy passed away at the age of 72 years old back in November 2016. I had the honor of meeting and interviewing him back in October 2013 when I was doing a special story on UTIP Athletics ahead of the school's 100 year anniversary. He was in El Paso to be inducted into the UTIP Athletics Hall of Fame class of 2013. I only used some of his quotes in the story I did, which you can find a link to in the description below. This is the first time that I'm sharing the full interview with the legendary Harry Flournoy, which I hope everyone enjoys. Uh, Mr. Flournoy, thank you very much for the interview and welcome back to El Paso. Can you speak a little bit about your uh, roots here in El Paso in your college days and how does it feel being back? Well, uh, my, day, my El Paso roots go back to 1962 when I first got here. And, and, and I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, when I first got here and I saw all this desert and I saw the wind blowing and I saw the dust kicking up, I wasn't really sure whether this is where I wanted to be or not. But after I got to meet some of the people here, some of the uh, students and the fans, uh, I realized that this was where I wanted to be. I just fell in love with El Paso. I'm always uh, excited when I have opportunities to come back here and to visit with old friends and to look at how the campus has grown and how the student body has grown and and to uh, uh, check in on my teams because the UTEP teams are really my teams. I, I follow them. You know, I'm in Georgia now, but I follow them all over the place. No matter where I am, I follow them. How important was Coach Haskins for you to come to Texas Western? Coach Haskins was very important. That's, it's a long story about the importance of him to me, but uh, to make it short is he was one of the first people that I met that was honest about uh, what he wanted, how he wanted to, to do it. He was fair. And, and to be honest with you, I came in, I was in a situation in, in high school where there was a lot of racial tensions going on and I didn't have a lot of trust for a lot of white people and he came in and, and he gained my trust and everything he said that he would do, he did. He was tough, but he was fair. And how it turned out is that toughness had enabled me to be successful away from the basketball court. That 66 uh, Texas Western team is still the only one in Texas to win an NCAA men's championship. How does it feel to be part of that legacy? Well, um, it's an honor. It's an honor. Now, now, we're waiting for the next one to come, but we're hoping it comes out of here. But, but it's an honor for us to have gone through what we had to go through to win that championship. It wasn't like um, uh, we were favorites. It wasn't like we were one of the top teams in the country when the season started. We weren't even in the top ten when the season started. But we had confidence in ourselves. We had a coach who was great. And, and we had guys who were w willing to work, and, and we're proud of, of what we accomplished. We were proud of the fact that we had to go through so many obstacles to get there, but we got there. Coach Haskins is one of the biggest legends, if not the biggest legends in Texas Western UTEP history. Can you speak a little bit about his legacy with this school? Certainly. Coach Haskins, in my opinion, is the greatest college basketball coach that ever patrolled the sidelines. I'm, you can name them, name them, and, and he, is, he is greater than all of them. Uh, 
Johnny Wooden and, and uh, 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 Dean Smith, uh, Roy Williams. Coach Haskins is the greatest college basketball coach that ever lived. And one of the reasons that he is is because he had a philosophy that he lived by. He knew how to pick guys that he knew would fit into his program. And if you go back and if you check everybody that has gone through his program, you won't find people that have had negative press afterwards, they have, have got into trouble, that have not been successful in life. It's because he taught us not only how to be successful on a basketball coach court, but to be successful off the court. And he drew so many great players, great character players to this university that the university couldn't help but grow. It wasn't like he was bringing in guys who were great players, but their characters were, in, were questionable. They would always have high character guys and it helped this university to grow and it attracts people. When you have good athletic teams, it attracts people. And he's a, a, a guy that means so much to this university and so much to this city, so much to this state that it, it's hard to comprehend. And uh, well, UTEP did the right thing, putting his name to the arena. How much do you think that this influences the uh, players coming into the town, to, into the team? It influences it a lot. If those players who understand the, the history of this university, those players who understand his history, they know how much, how great he is, and they know how much uh, uh, he meant to the, to the sport of basketball. So it influences a lot of players. That's why you get a lot of players in here who may not have, who may not be household names when they come here, but after they've been here a year or two, they become household names. Nate Archibald, Tim Hardaway, Anthony Davis, those people become household names, and it's because of the influence that they got from Coach Haskins. And now having somebody that was under his wing uh, as Tim Floyd as the coach on the team, do you like it that it's like continuing in that legacy? I am excited about Coach Floyd being the basketball coach here. It, what the first thing that he did and that I really liked was he started recognizing the history and, tr and started getting the history of this program back, bringing in guys who, who played for Coach Haskins years ago. And, I mean, he understands Texas Western basketball. He understands basketball. He is a great coach, but he's a great person. And I am excited about him being the one who is now the head basketball coach, and I hope that he stays. We all do. Uh, now talking about you, uh, UTEP Hall of Fame, the Athletic Hall of Fame, how does it feel being uh, honored by in the 2013 class? I, I, I can't put it into words. Uh, when I got the call, uh, Jeff called, and I was in New Jersey when he called. And I, was, I was doing a speaking engagement there when he called, and I was so excited. I, I forgot what I was going to be talking about to those kids, but it is an honor. You know, you could be honored by a lot of people and I have been honored by a lot of people in a lot of different places, but to be honored by your own, that's special. That's special. So uh, to be honored by this university uh, is special to me, and it's, it is something that I will always treasure. I will put that first and foremost in my uh, curio cabinet where I have all of my trophies and all that stuff. That's going to be the centerpiece. Uh, UTIP has grown a lot in 100 years. What does it mean to keep growing more in the next 25, 50, 100 years? All it needs to do is what it's been doing, uh, catering to, to the community. Because that's what this, has been, uh, this school has been famous for. They cater to the people. They cater to the, the community that, they, that they're in. Uh, a lot of schools, they go after the uh, uh, elite. Well, the elite is right here around you and that's what this university uh, figured out they, and they, that's what they cater to and as long as they do that they will continue to grow as long as they help these the people in a community to grow and achieve they're going to grow. <laughs>
any final message to the El Paso community that you would like to say on your behalf? All I would want to say is that uh, the people of El Paso, I love you. I always have and I always will. No matter what happens, where I go, I can go a thousand miles, two thousand miles from here and there's always be a piece of me in El Paso. This city is where I grew. It's where I grew and it's, I'll always have it in my heart.